What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2022 Honda Civic. So about the all new generation Civic here, this is a really big deal, you know, first new generation in several, several years now. And uh, I think it looks really good. It's a radical departure from the previous generation Civic, which was bolder and a little more daring with its styling. I think that this is gonna age a lot better. It's a little more middle of the road. I think that a lot more people are going to like it and uh, you know, not gonna have anyone be turned off by the looks like you might've had with the previous generation. It's just a really nice looking car. It looks so classy here, especially in silver in this touring trim with the 18 inch wheels and stuff. It's a really nice look. It's also a larger vehicle than before. So it actually has the longest wheelbase in its class. They stretch the wheelbase by 1.4 inches actually. The whole vehicle itself is 1.3 inches longer. It also has a half inch wider track. So I mean, really stretched out in all the ways. They also uh, kind of lowered the fenders a little bit, especially in the rear there. So that's a little bit lower. And even this A-pillar here is moved about two inches rearward than what it was in the uh, previous generation. So it gives you a more you know elegant and longer hood here and so just some nicer proportions, even though you still have a pretty short deck lid there in the back and uh, you know almost like a fastback kind of style to um, the way the rear glass is sloped into the trunk lid there. But anyway, back up front here, it's awesome that you actually get standard LED headlamps on all trims. A lot of other companies will make you go up to higher trims um, for at least the LED DRLs, but here even the daytime running lights with that cool LED strip are standard, as are the great LED headlights. So you have much better visibility at night than some of the competitors with their base models. Now this is a fully loaded touring trim here. So this one is like $28,500. But even on a base trim, you get the same headlights, you know, nice uh, distinguished look up front there. I think it looks really sharp. You have these 18 inch wheels on the touring trim and uh, they actually look really nice. Of course, you will get smaller wheels and a little bit more of a sidewall on the lower trim. So if you want something that maybe has a little bit of a more forgiving tire for potholes and stuff, you know, you will be able to go down to smaller wheels if that, you know, these thinner sidewalls aren't your thing. Uh, but otherwise on the side profile here, again, it's very elegant and kind of just looks like a baby Accord, honestly. This whole vehicle kind of gives off a smaller Accord vibe. And out back there, again, it's pretty conservative. If you do want something a little more exciting for the back end, you can wait for the hatchback version coming in a few months. And that's gonna have a little bit of a bolder back end with the taillights and stuff. But this, it's very conservative, but I think it looks really good. And again, I think it will age very well. I think, you know, with these very slim horizontal headlights and taillights, it kind of reminds me a lot of the, you know, generations from the early to mid nineties, you know, which also kind of aged very well. And I think actually still look pretty cool to this day. I think you kind of have some of those uh, attributes here with this new version as well. And, uh, but yeah, so overall from every angle, I think the new Civic is a really good look. All right, so start up and go for a drive. The new Civic here actually has a brand new Honda key as well. And uh, it's a really nice key. I mean, it's just plastic. I mean, this is a mainstream brand, so I don't expect anything super fancy, uh, but just really nice. It has a little bit of a metal type trim there on the bottom, just a couple buttons on the back, and uh, even has a remote start there. But I just want to thank Honda for keeping their key small. This is one of the smallest keys in the market, and it's actually, you know, Honda used to have one of the smallest keys, and I'm glad they stuck with a small key. So you don't have, you know, every other key these days is enormous and takes up tons of space in your pocket. I love how small this key is. Thank you, Honda, for making a small key. But anyway, um, yeah, so it is, of course, keyless access, keyless entry, and push button start here in the Civic. So you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the engine start button, and it starts right up. Also, if you're curious to hear about the interior in the all new Civic, my wife and I actually just did a full in-depth interior review on this vehicle. So I'll link that above. You can go watch that if you want to hear all our thoughts on this interior. But overall, man, they were not messing around with this new interior. It is so cool looking, but everything just feels so nice and upscale and definitely hands down, I would say, if not the best interior in the segment, one of the top for sure. It is super, super nice, but yeah, Definitely go check out that full interior review to hear all our thoughts. All right, so setting off here in the 2022 Civic. So uh, first thing you notice, well, if you hear a little, little bit of extra road noise, that's because we just had a torrential downpour and so the roads are soaking wet. Um, but one thing you'll probably notice right away in the new Civic is just how quiet it is actually. So on all models, they improved the sound deadening and on the touring trims here, they added even more sound deadening so that it really um, is pretty quiet. And before the roads were covered with water, um, I was actually pretty impressed for a compact, you know, mainstream sedan that's as affordable as this is, it's actually very quiet in here and I'm very impressed 
impressed with that. It works together with this Bose stereo to give you a really isolated experience when you have the stereo on, and it's very impressive. Other things I'm loving are the visibility here is spectacular in the new Civic. So nice low dashboard, the hood drops down nicely, and these A-pillars are super thin, even with the speaker in them here. I love that it's so easy to see around that A-pillar. You also have the mirrors off onto the doors now, so that's greatly improved so so easy to see forward and view out of the sides is great view out of the back is also pretty good that rear shelf is a little higher than I would like personally uh, but it's still you know plenty fine view out of the back window there no issues really another thing that I'm really loving is the steering weight I think whenever they were developing this it feels to me like they were benchmarking the new Mazda 3 which I think is one of the best in this segment and this has this beautiful steering feel they really did a really good job they did a bunch of improvements to actually improve the steering feel its response and the weight I'm noticing is a little bit heftier than it was before now I think actually Honda played this right it's not quite as overboard as the Mazda 3 which I think is a little too heavy for its steering weight for just a normal ordinary sedan this is really the Goldilocks of steering in my opinion not only for just this segment but just in general this is like perfect steering and Honda really usually nails things like that and so this is no exception this is they really got all the driver controls really well done combined with this great feeling steering wheel it just I love steering this thing maybe an odd compliment but I do it's really great another thing is the throttle response is really nice too here in the Civic so you are still running a CVT transmission but it seems a little less mushy than pre previous CVTs from Honda and it's a little more direct whenever I step on the gas I get an immediate response it doesn't feel like anything's slipping like you often get with CVTs I really like how responsive it feels and you also have a sport mode now which will actually increase the response for the transmission and make it even a little bit sportier um, now it doesn't have any normal shift points really like I think that the Nissan Sentra for example does a better job of imitating a real automatic with its CVT and the way that that works this is a little still a little bit more CVT like than those and I think the Corolla still is a better CVT with it's a real first gear so starting off from a stop it's gonna feel more natural in the Corolla but overall this CVT actually isn't bad and I had my doubts about it based on previous Hondas but this is actually really nice um, so that's great also brakes feel really good another thing Honda usually does very well so they really start to bite pretty close towards the top of the pedal but it's not so touchy that you have to be really careful and delicate with your inputs you can still be a little more forceful with your brake pedal but it's not like you're going to be sending people through the windshield if you you know are a little too rough on the brakes it is really easy to drive that's one thing i'm noticing is it's just i'm just enjoying even just normal slow around town driving i really enjoy this it has this strangely satisfying feeling um, whenever most other vehicles in this segment are just ordinary also this new platform is more rigid for the new civic and so that extra rigidity helps not only with the handling and you know even like the steering feel and response but also with the ride they say the ride is about 20 percent smoother than before I'm not sure how they quantify that exactly but basically I've noticed that it's a very smooth ride I didn't think that the old Civic was really that bad honestly I thought it had a pretty good ride compared to a lot of its competitors but this is even better and um, I think it's again right up there is one of the smoothest in its class so it's one of the quietest one of the smoothest one of the most luxurious one of the highest tech but I'm gonna go ahead and put it up into that sport driving mode here and let's turn down onto this back road here and see how it does here we go. Okay. A little bit slow to kind of take off, but then it got the idea and went for it. So it's a pretty decent amount of power. So here at the Touring Trim, we're running the 1.5 liter turbocharged uh, four-cylinder engine. It does have VTEC on the exhaust side. Um, so, you know, it doesn't feel like it's very dramatic or anything, but they say it does have it now. And so anyway, this engine now does 180 horsepower and 177 pound-feet of torque. And uh, that is about six more horsepower and about 15 more pound-feet, I believe, of torque than before. It's also important to point out that uh, those uh, horsepower numbers are for 87 octane gas. So it's not like you have to put premium in this thing in order to get the peak horsepower numbers like you do with some other turbocharged vehicles. And this, it's rated for that 87. Um, so even on regular gas, you're gonna get the best performance out of this turbo engine. The zero to 60 time though isn't quick. It's actually a little bit slower than the old Civic, honestly. So um, I believe the zero to 60 time that uh, some of the magazines have been getting have been around seven and a half seconds. And so 
that feels appropriate, you know. So I think, you know, what you're going to feel is not so much the 0 to 60 time, because very rarely do you do a true 0 to 60. But I think what you're going to notice with this engine is the extra torque that you get with it. Um, you know, these turbocharged engines are really nice for that, because in comparison to even like the top engine in the Corolla or the Sentra or the Elantra or the Forte, any of those, um, you know, they are naturally aspirated and they are going to have a lot less torque. So passing power on the highway um, or even just grunt whenever you're not, you know, going to redline and you're just kind of cruising at, you know, lower RPMs, that's where these turbo engines really pick up steam a lot quicker than what you get with, uh, you know, those naturally aspirated engines. And so, honestly, this is one of the most powerful in its segment. The only thing that outdoes it is the Mazda 3, which I believe is like 186 horsepower. So we're only talking a few horsepower here and there, and that's also naturally aspirated, but that motor does feel really strong. Um, but yeah, this motor feels pretty good. It's a little bit laggy. I wish it was a little more responsive, but we are talking about a normal Civic here, not the SI or anything sporty, really. So, you know, I kind of have to cut it a break a little bit. And I think for most people, it's going to be plenty of power. Uh, if you're not interested in the turbo thing and you don't need this much power, you can also go down to a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder. So a bigger engine, but no turbo. And that does about 158 horsepower. And uh, that's been an engine that Honda's had for a long time. It's been proven. It's reliable. It's a really you know, good motor and will actually give you pretty good fuel economy as well, even though this 1.5T motor is actually the way to get the best fuel economy. That's how you get, I think, the absolute best is like 42 mpg on the highway with this engine. But interestingly, only in the EX trim. The touring trim here with the extra weight from the sound insulation and everything and the bigger wheels actually lowers your fuel economy a little bit, which I'll talk about more in a few minutes. But we're on a little bit of a rougher road here. You can hear some of that road noise now that this road's dry, but I'm still, you know, pretty refined, I think. But we're coming up some corners here. Uh, corners I always take in my reviews. Let's see how the new Civic handles. Okay, so the roads are still a little bit damp, so I'm feeling it shift around a little bit, but honestly, this is doing really well. It's really feels like it has a very low center of gravity. Also in the sport mode here, the transmission is kind of downshifting uh, in a way and giving me uh, some higher revs here. All right, so it's really good. And so there was a little bit of a wet patch there and then it went to dry. And I could feel the tires, you know, were a little bit struggling for grip there, but they were doing really well. These are great tires on here, actually. So these 18 inch wheels are running these Goodyear Eagle Sport tires, which are actually high performance all season tires on a touring trim Civic. I would maybe expect it on a sport trim of a Civic, but having on the touring trim here is a really nice perk. Um, and so, yeah, you're gonna have a little bit of better grip than what you usually get, I think, in previous generations of the Civic. And um, they feel really good combined with, again, this wonderful steering. Uh, it just makes for a real joy around corn. It's still so nice and light still. That's one of the great things about vehicles in this segment. This Civic, for example, weighs 3,054 pounds, um, even in a touring trim here. So it'll be even lighter, probably under 3,000 pounds if you go for one without all these toys that this one has. But, um, you know, so I mean, nice and light. It's, you know, still has a multi-link rear suspension. You know, so it's a little bit more advanced than some of the others, which just use a torsion beam rear suspension. And I mean, everything about this just, like I said, just feels really nice. It's always been a little bit of a leg up from a lot of the other competitors. I think Mazda kind of one up them a bit with the new Mazda 3, but I think this actually kind of one ups it again. And I think now this is still the king as far as driving dynamics, as long as you're okay with the CVT. Again, one huge redeeming quality with the Mazda 3 is one, it's a naturally aspirated engine that has as much power as the turbo competitors do, and it has a normal six speed automatic transmission. Plus, the Mazda has the other perks of offering all wheel drive and also offering a very punchy turbocharged engine, which has almost double the torque that this thing does. Um, and so if you're someone who wants a, you know, a lot of power and all wheel drive, um, or one or the other, you know, you can get that with those. And, um, you know, that's that, you know, from a mechanical standpoint, I think the Mazda still has the advantage, but I think with everything else here, um, this is probably, like I said, going to be my favorite pick in this segment. Another acceleration. Is that when we are rolling a little bit of a higher speed and there was less of a delay? So yeah, this thing, you know, pulls totally fine. I think, you know, for most people's, uh, you know, uses, again, this is going to be totally good and no one's going to really have any complaints. And uh, yeah, so it just, it drives very, very nice. And you'll notice that from the first test drive, just the weightiness of everything, the way everything responds to your commands is going to be something that, again, aside from the Mazda 3, I think is unmatched in this segment and just makes this feel cut above the rest. All right, so now we're out on the highway here in the new Civic and uh, it has the next generation version of Honda Sensing. Um, and it's actually a really cool display here in the digital gauge cluster. 
or where it'll visualize cars that are coming into your path and you know basically just kind of monitors everything around you almost like a Tesla does and it's a really cool system it also has a wider angle camera now for the Honda sensing and so it gives it a better view of the road and it uses that combined with radar still and all those different sensors um, and so they say that uh, you know the lane keeping assist system for example and the adaptive cruise has all been designed to be smoother that, that it wanders less and that it's really good and honestly even the previous generation Honda sensing system was one of the best uh, driver assist systems in the business in my opinion I always thought that the steering was fantastic I actually did a five-hour road trip in an Accord and was very impressed with just how well it steered with the steering assist it was it never went outside of the lane it was always very very dedicated to feeling very safe and I was able to actually relax and this new generation I mean I'm gonna continue to test it here during my week of driving but it is fantastic the only thing that I'm noticing it does do is whenever um, a vehicle does kind of cut into your lane within the field of view of the camera it will give you a little beep letting you know that which I think is a little bit overkill if I'm watching the road I should you know already know that stuff so maybe there's a way to turn off some of the extra beeps but otherwise I mean it's fantastic it's doing an excellent job steering whereas some other systems like Hyundai's um, system always seems to um, be all over the place still and I don't have a great experience with that um, there are some other systems that are pretty good in this segment Nissan systems pretty good um, you know there's a few that are very impressive but I think this is definitely hands down one of the best out there it is so good at steering um, yeah it's it honestly feels like it could drive itself you still have to keep your hands on the wheel this isn't any kind of hands-free system but it really gives you that much confidence that you can kind of relax just a little bit and let the car make those steering corrections for you and it's really good all the safety tech here though in the Civic is actually really good so they give you uh, the automatic emergency braking is standard the lane keeping assist the adaptive cruise control which now includes uh, traffic jam assist that is now all standard too so some others still make you pay extra for adaptive cruise not so here in the Honda uh, they do reserve blind spot monitoring unfortunately still for only the EX and touring trims um, but I mean this car doesn't really have very bad blind spots if you don't have blind spot monitoring it's not the end of the world but uh, that's the only thing that they reserve and even the blind spot monitoring is better they used to have a weird little system with blind spot monitoring in Hondas especially in the Civic now it's just a normal indicator in the mirror like it is in all the other cars out there these days and so I'm glad that that's more normal now and also when you go up to the touring trim here you do get some more advanced uh, driver assist and stuff and you get the traffic sign recognition so it'll let you know about speed limits and stuff it also will have a uh, low speed braking control also reverse automatic emergency braking and that kind of stuff it will do um, so some of those features are reserved for you know these top trims but otherwise I mean the fact you get the adaptive cruise lane keep assist all that stuff is standard everything that I'm doing there on the highway you get an even a base uh, Civic is very impressive and so yeah the steering just feels so natural with the assist it's not annoying it's honestly hard to do a really good driver assist system and like I said Honda already had a really good one this I'm thankful they didn't mess it with success it's just even better than before and on top of the safety tech also the actual crash structure itself is a lot better than before I know that I mean the Civic was always you know a top safety pick and all that uh, but now it's even better they have improved the crash structure that extra rigidity also helps this to feel you know stronger it's also a little bit larger which certainly helps and they also said that they optimized the structure so that it actually uh, interacts better with larger vehicles so uh, you know in a crash with a larger vehicle it'll do better than uh, it did in the past and it's really cool they're even mentioning those things and talking about those things since most other vehicles in this segment don't really mention too much about the structure itself it's all about the tech these days in the safety realm but um, yeah I love that they're doing that because especially with you know half the country being obsessed with pickup trucks these days and there being more and more trucks and enormous monster truck sized SUVs out there uh, the fact that you know you're in your little Civic and they designed it to you know do better against those larger vehicles plus having all the safety tech to avoid an accident in the first place but that just is something I really much appreciate you know as someone that does really care about safety a lot and they even actually did a new airbag design for both the front airbags it's a new design and so supposedly the new airbags will help with um, I guess containing your head a little bit better in a crash there's also rear seat airbags here for the first time of the Civic so it's great that they have those too but anyway uh, so thanks to Honda I'm gonna have the Civic for an entire week here so I'm gonna drive all over the place and now I'm gonna come back and give you guys my final real world fuel economy here in the Civic and see you know what I get here over all my driving and I'll also come back and give you any other thoughts that I have here and also my thoughts on the pricing and how I can 
compare us to its competition. All right, so I've been driving the 2022 Civic for a few more days now, and I've put 135 miles on it in that time, and I've really enjoyed my experience in it. It's actually nicer than I was expecting it to be. It keeps really, really impressing me, even with small little things like the turn signals, for example. They First off, the switches just feel really nice, have a nice weight, just random little things. Even the turn signal sound is new and sounds more expensive than it did in the past. Just little details, and I think I'm starting to notice a lot of those little details adding up here in the Civic. And it adds up to a vehicle that is really best in class in most ways, honestly. And I'm still just really impressed by the fact that this CVT is more responsive than before. It feels more natural and it isn't annoying me like CVTs often do. And um, yeah, it's, I'd say one of the better CVTs out there. The engine is great. I mean, yes, this thing isn't fast or exciting. That's what the SI is for. But you know, it gets the job done totally fine, totally sufficient for merging onto the highway, all that type of stuff. And I just find myself really just enjoying the you know normal commute stuff, the normal you know running errands in this vehicle. It's all very enjoyable. Like yeah, it's not wildly exciting, but it's satisfying, and it just this car just drives so so well. But anyway, a couple other things I mentioned here are the fuel economy and the pricing in the Civic. So first, fuel economy. Over my 137 miles of driving now, I've been getting 32 mpg exactly um, which is actually better than i was expecting as well considering these are only rated at 31 mpg in the city 38 on the highway and 34 combined now i did do mostly suburban around town driving i did do a little bit of highway driving i've sampled this adaptive cruise control system several different times on the highway now and um but yeah i mean so you know i did do a little bit of highway driving to help that out but still i'm honestly most of the time in I did very similar driving to all my other, you know, press cars that I drive, and typically I end up getting one to two MPG less than the city rating. So I'm getting one MPG better than the city rating in this, which actually leads me to believe this could overperform those EPA ratings potentially. And uh, the touring trim, it is a little bit lower than other versions of the Civic. If you go for an EX Civic with the same engine, um, you're going to end up getting between two to four MPG better, um, just because of I guess it's a little bit lighter, smaller wheels, all that kind of stuff helps that to get a little bit better fuel economy. So I mean. You know, the best version of the Civic here will max out at 42 mpg on the highway and those. So if you are someone who's, you know, very conscious of your fuel economy, just know that, you know, you can get even better fuel economy in some of those. And uh, this turbo motor is, does have a slight advantage over the naturally aspirated, less powerful two liter engine in the Civic, but those also are only a couple mpg off and still do very good fuel economy as well. And then the last thing to mention here is the pricing of the Civics here. So they start around 22, thousand dollars and then this one as tested is twenty eight thousand three hundred for this fully loaded touring trim so as far as that pricing goes now that's definitely not one of the cheapest out there and so when you're looking at you know this compared to a lot of its other competition um, you know this isn't gonna seem like the best value on paper in the very beginning because um, you know the only other thing I mean like a Corolla is about 28 and change and that actually gives you less for your money you have a smaller screen you don't get full leather seats in the Corollas for that 28,000 or so um, you have a smaller digital gauge screen and the materials while they are improved in the new Corollas are actually now not as nice as they are here in the new Civic because the Civic just leapfrogged basically everything outside of that Mazda 3 so I think you know compared to stuff like a Corolla this is a great value the Mazda 3 is almost identical its pricing and so I think that's why I really think that Honda was benchmarking the Mazda when they developed this because this basically feels like the Mazda in a lot of ways except it's better than the Mazda in some other ways like for example you have an easier to use touchscreen which is closer to you and larger and so especially for like you know Apple CarPlay stuff where you're used to touching the phone icons not having to scroll around and spin a controller wheel and like you do in the Mazda I think gives us an advantage you have more customization in the gauges than you get in the Mazda you have a bigger back seat than you get in the Mazda bigger trunk than the Mazda. Now the Mazda has a few things, like I said, you have all-wheel drive available in the Mazda. You also have a turbo motor that's way more powerful available than that if you're willing to go up into the $30,000 range for your compact sedan. Um, so, you know, there are some little niches where the Mazda will still be best. And then you have all your more value-oriented uh, offerings that are competing as well that are cheaper. So you have stuff like the Nissan Sentra, you have the Hyundai Elantra and the Kia Forte. Uh, the Elantra has very similar tech. You have nice large gauges that are digital in the limited version of the Elantra, nice large touchscreen, which is actually about an inch bigger than this one. But 
Um, actually, I think this one's a little bit taller, so they actually come out feeling pretty similar. This actually feels maybe a tiny bit bigger than the Elantra screen in reality. Uh, but regardless, you know, the Elantra is very similar as far as tech. But when you sit in an Elantra compared to this, I mean, this has much nicer materials everywhere than the Elantra and feels feels more expensive than the Elantra by a pretty decent margin as well. So, um, you know, if that's something that's important to you, then go for the Civic. If it's not something that's important to you, then you can go for the Elantra. Now, the Elantra, you do get less power. That's another thing is a lot of those, you know, cheaper competitors do give you much less power and so you're down about 30 horsepower on you know all of them the Sentra the Forte and the Elantra uh, only the Corolla and the Mazda kind of match this as far as horsepower but it is worth noting that like the Sentra for example if you don't mind having less power is an excellent value you can get one of those fully loaded for under $24,000 you're about four grand less than this and you still have you know a pretty nice and high-tech interior you have quilted leather seats you can even get in the Nissan but you you have you know simpler gauges a little bit of a smaller screen you know minor little things like that where you kind of uh you know, are a little bit behind the Civic here, but you are saving a good bit of money in that, um, you know, but again, you do have a little less power. Now, you know, like I said, Elantra is kind of the same story with, you know, you save 2,000 bucks, but you also have less power. Forte, you save, again, about 4,000 or so, but you have less power, and that is probably gonna be the lowest tech out of all the interiors these days, although that's crazy to say, because the Forte interior is still very nice for the money. For low 20,000s, it's nicer than, you know, anything even from a few years ago where it's, crazy how all of these have gotten so insanely nice for the money so yeah but so whenever you're looking at the sticker prices the msrps are like oh well i'll just go for a center or something i can live with a you know slightly you know less glitzy interior or something but then you look at depreciation and that is the one big thing that you know you might not really consider but it's worth considering because the corolla and the civic here both of these are like the top two as far as depreciation and not depreciating as much as the others and so you know yeah Yes, even if you are paying, you know, twenty thousand dollars or something for a fully loaded Civic like this, these only depreciate about thirty-five percent over the course of five years, according to CarEdge.com. Corolla is about the same, and so you know, whenever you're talking about depreciation that's that low, it's a big difference from stuff like the Sentra, the Elantra, or the Forte, where those are depreciating about forty-five to fifty percent over that same five years. And whenever you're talking about actual dollar amounts, that can come out to again being about somewhere in the you know four to five thousand dollar range uh, obviously it depends on what trim you get and the deal you get on your personal purchase but you know it just goes to illustrate that you know depending on how long you plan to keep your vehicle for yeah you pay four grand less for the Sentra but when you go to sell it you know you're still you're actually gonna lose that extra four thousand dollars in savings whenever you could turn out to sell it versus buying this paying the extra four grand up front and then having that value retained over the long haul and so whenever you look at it in that regard um, you know the Civic actually kind of makes a little bit of, of a better investment proposition uh, compared to some of the others and uh, and by the way that depreciation since it's a faster rate it drops off even faster you know once you go beyond those five years whereas something like a Civic a Corolla I mean if you talk to anyone who's shopping for a used vehicle you know and they want something reliable you know what do you see with 200,000 miles still driving around Corollas and Civics and so there's a good reason for that and that's why these don't depreciate as much and so you know you're buying a quality product that's going to last a long time now stuff like the Elantra and the Forte they do give you a hundred thousand mile warranty and a 10-year warranty with those so they do actually have more manufacturer support you know as far as a length of time goes with those so that is you know one way that they kind of fight that but you can't fight the depreciation when it comes to selling you're just gonna have a car that's worth less with some of those cheaper competitors um, so you know that's just something to keep in mind as well that in the end they all kind of come out about the same you either spend the extra four thousand dollars now get a you know higher quality product that holds its value or you save the four grand now but then you get you lose four grand later you know whenever you turn around to sell it and upgrade to something else so it just depends on you know what your preference is i guess as far as you know how you want to make that payment but like i said it kind of comes out to be a wash in the end you either you know lose it here or there and so um i personally think you know you're better off spending the few thousand dollars extra if you can afford it having a vehicle that's nicer that coddles you a little bit more that gives you more power and uh you know all those such of things and i think the safety here is a little bit better because you have you know those new airbags and all this stuff you know and these i think the civic's always just been one of the best 
best vehicles in this segment and Honda wasn't going to mess around. They're going to again go for being best in segment. And after spending, I mean, I'm not saying this lightly because I've spent an entire week with every single one of its other competitors now and this is the last one. Everyone's kind of revised their cars in the past year or two. Honda's one of the last ones to come out with an all new version. After spending a week in all that stuff I just mentioned, spending a week in this, this would be my pick. Um, that's and it's kind of a pretty easy conclusion to come to for me uh, it's just the Civic hands down is one of the nicest driving ones best interior I think good, really good amount of space best in class space I think pretty much um, you know all those things just add up to make the Civic number one in my mind um, now again depending on your preferences and you know what you're looking for you know that might not be the case for you but for anyone that's curious this would be my pick in the compact sedan segment but yeah, so that's about all my thoughts here on the Civic. Uh, it's like I said, very, very impressive. They did such a good job on this car and I really enjoy it. And I'm now just excited for the SI version. I'm excited to test out the hatchback as well. If you need a little extra versatility, you know, stay tuned for that. But yeah, so thank you guys very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. Huge thanks to Honda for providing me here with the new Civic to review for you guys today. And yeah, thank you guys very much once again for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.